Zapier or Make? Which is the right integration or workflow automation platform for you? In this video, we're gonna take a look at when and why you should opt for using one or the other, and of course, which one's gonna give you more bang for your buck. Integration automation platforms or workflow automation platforms are quite simply the bee's knees. These platforms allow you to connect your favorite apps so you can automate almost any workflow imaginable and save yourself hours on irritating, tiresome, and boring admin tasks. Better yet, these platforms are no-code platforms, so you won't have to keep annoying your dev friend with endless questions. Zapier is a point-and-click workflow automation platform that simplifies the building process. It offers over 4,000 apps, which is a directory unmatched by its competitors. Zapier would have to be considered the most popular and well-known integrations platform. While Make, which recently went through a rebrand and was formerly known as Integromat, is both a no-code and low-code workflow automation platform. Similar to Zapier, you can create custom task automation scenarios and build multi-logic workflows using a search, drag, and drop interface. So rather than being a complete bore and sitting here talking plainly about each platform and then comparing them, I wanna jump into the nitty gritty and show you how you can build a workflow automation with Zapier and with Make. Now the workflow that I want to automate is both simple and a common use case. I've created here a newsletter subscription form using paper form. And when someone subscribes to the newsletter, completes the form, I'd like to send their details to my subscription spreadsheet as well as simultaneously send an email welcoming them to the subscribers list. So we'll jump into Zapier and we're gonna create a Zap. That's what we refer to as a workflow automation. Now, the building process and the actual UI of Zapier is definitely easier to follow in comparison to Make, especially for those who have just been introduced to integrations and it's the first time they've actually set up a workflow automation. Within Zapier, we'll be asked for a trigger event. For this, it's going to be a form submission on my paper form. So I'll search for my paper form app. Then I'm gonna select my paper form account. And next, of course, I'll have to select the actual form that triggers the event. And that's gonna be my newsletter subscription form. So if I select that there, then continue. We'll test the trigger. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull data from the last submission of my form. We can see there we've got test submission, Billy Bob, Billy Bob at Gmail. And now it's time to move on to the actual action. So the event is the trigger. When this occurs, we want the action to occur. So the action is going to be firstly to populate my Google Sheet. So once again, we'll search for the app Google Sheet, select the event, which is gonna be create spreadsheet row, select the account. The visualization of a workflow automation creation with Zapier is incredibly simple. The way they've built it out in a step-by-step -step format makes it incredibly intuitive for anyone, especially those who are first-time workflow automation builders. So I'm gonna select the sheet I want to populate as well as the worksheet within the sheet where I will be creating a new row. And once I've done that, it's actually now time to select what fields from my form or what responses from the submitter are going to populate what columns within my spreadsheet. And as we can see, it's pulled across the columns from my spreadsheet, which match exactly with the questions of my form. So it's easy peasy from here. It's just mapping the field with its correlating column. So for first name, if we click into this blank space here, it'll open up a drop down menu with all of the data values we can obtain from the form submission, the new form submission that is. And we can even type and search, let's say first name, voila, there we go. We'll select the answer value there, pipe it in and we'll continue this process. Now this is a functionality that is shared by Make, so there's no difference in comparison between mapping over data values between your apps. All right, now that we've set that up, it's time to test the action or test the connection. So we'll click test and continue. And we're gonna jump into our spreadsheet because we can see here a spreadsheet row has been created or sent to Google Sheet. And voila, there we can see we didn't have row seven before. So my last submission has now been populated into the Google Sheet. And it's that easy. Now let's take a look at adding another step to this flow. This is where I want an email to automatically be sent to the submitter. So for this, I use Gmail, of course. So I'm gonna search for Gmail, add my account, 
Select the event, which is going to be to send an email. Continue. Now add my account. Continue again. Now the setup action, we're asked to provide a to an email address. Obviously I've got that question within my form. So I'm gonna search there. CC, we're gonna leave that, the from, from whatever subject. Now we need to as it's required. So I'm just gonna say newsletter subscription. Simple enough, right? And the body of the text, hi. And then we can start piping in our responses from the form submission. So I'll use that first name to make the email personal. And I'm just gonna leave it like that for the moment. We don't need to get too in depth into the setup here. From there, we'll select continue and we'll test and review. Now, obviously I used a dummy email, but if we went into my Gmail account, took a look at the sent box, we'd be able to see that that email was successfully sent. All right, now let's take a look at make and how we build a scenario as opposed to building a zap. Both are workflow automations, they just have different names. So we'll select create a new scenario and we're gonna see that the UIs are a bit different as well as that building process. So let's get into it. We're gonna to select to create a module, which within Zapier is to create a step. So I'll search for my app paper form. There we go, select that. And then of course it's gonna be a new submission. That's the event. We'll add our account and then select for me, the form I would like to collect the new submission from, which is again, my newsletter form. All right, once we've added that, it's time to click okay. Now, the next difference between Zapier and Make is as we remember, we were able to automatically pull the last submission of my form. This is where it gets different. What we need to do is actually run the scenario to pull data. So we'll click run once over here, then we're gonna jump into the live view of the form and actually run a submission. So I'll just quickly get in there, Billy Bob, Billy Bob at mail.co. And yes, I do confirm to monthly newsletters, then submit. All right, now if we jump back into make, we can see there that we've got a notification because the scenario has successfully run and make has pulled data from my app. In this instance, my paper form form. So if we click on that, we'll notice that we see some data there. But let's continue creating the scenario or creating the workflow automation. So we're gonna to click to add another module, which again is a step. And this time we're gonna search for Google Sheets, then select that bad boy there, add row. And we're just gonna run through the process of setting this up. Select my spreadsheet, which again is my newsletter spreadsheet, my newsletter subscriptions. Um, the sheet, sheet one by default, of course. Now you might notice that visually, the building process between Zapier and Make is different. However, the process is extremely similar. We have the same way of pulling in data, selecting, going step by step through the process. So while it might appear overwhelming when you're creating a scenario or workflow automation with Make, Really, it does not differ from Zapier at all. There's just a bit more complexity when it comes to the functionality and what you can actually achieve with Make. So we've set that up. And then the next scenario, uh, sorry, the next module I want to do is my Gmail account. So I'm gonna select to add that account there. And voila. Again, we're able to pull that data from that first scenario, the first module. Now we're gonna select hi, and again, first name, much like we did in the first. Oh, of course, I need to add my recipient. So we'll click add recipient, and we're gonna pull in the email from that submission that the scenario pulled in, the data the, the scenario pulled in. Where are we? There we are, billybobatmail.co, and done. Now we've looked at the process of building a workflow automation or a zap, and then we've looked at the process of building a workflow automation or a scenario. Now both, of the processes are incredibly similar. Visually, it doesn't appear as though they are though. Something I really like about Make is the ability to change the visualization of the workflow. We can move our modules around, we can zoom out, we can zoom in. So when it comes to more complex workflows, 
Make is definitely the winner. Whereas if we jump into Zap, it's that linear step-by-step -step format, which can get pretty complicated if you've got long complex workflows trying to find which step you're referring to and so on. But let's take a look at what else we can achieve with both platforms. Let's add another step to this Zap. Now Zapier allows us to add filters, formatting, delays among a lot of other things. I'm gonna add a filter. Now a filter allows us to configure when we actually want this action to occur. So I'm gonna select my question, do you confirm to monthly newsletters? And when the answer to that question is yes, then I've told Zapier I want that action to be triggered. If the submitter answers no, then Zapier knows, do not trigger this action, do not add that submitter to my Google Sheet and do not send them an email. We also have the ability to add multiple rows of conditions. Let's quickly delete this step here and we'll take a look at formatting. Say for example, you're pulling data that is text, numbers, date or time, you can actually use Zapier's feature to format that within the Zap so the data is sent in the format of your choosing. Now, something that I absolutely love with Zapier and it actually does this better than make is the delay function. So we'll delete this step and we'll jump between Google Sheets and Gmail because it makes a lot more sense to delay an email than populating a spreadsheet. We'll select the delay function and we have the ability to delay for, until, or after a particular queue, another step within the Zap. So I'm gonna select delay until then I'll hit continue. Now the awesome thing that Zapier does here is it accepts multiple formatting of a date or time. So I have delay until, and I can literally write at noon tomorrow. So when the first event form submission occurs, Zapier knows not to send the email until noon the following day. Powerful, right? Now on top of those three features I just mentioned, if we add another step, we can actually type Zap and see the functionality that Zap offers. It's quite endless. I mean, the ability you have with this tool is huge. Now, something that I would like to show you is the ability to include different pathways. So I'm gonna search for path here in the action step or app event. And this allows me to break my Zap into multiple pathways. I can then configure the conditions of path A and path B. So when a new submission, that is the event trigger occurs, I can then determine when a submission should go down a particular path with the conditional rules. Now let's look at how Make visualizes this. So here we have the scenario or the workflow automation, paper form to Google Sheet to Gmail. I'll click on this wrench or spanner icon here and select add router. Then I can move my Gmail to the top and add another pathway. It's following the same process as Zapier, but in my opinion, this visualized representation of the flow is 10 times better. Not only can we do that, but we can add a multitude of other tools to our scenario. And the functionality of these definitely beat the functionality of Zapier's. They're more complex and give you more power in what you can achieve. However, this is not the case for all tools. And I'll show you what I mean. I've created a sleep tool, which is similar to the delay tool within Zapier. If I click on this, we'll notice that we are given a maximum length of 300 seconds. So we can only delay a scenario for five minutes. There is a workaround to this though, although it is definitely more complex in comparison to Zapier's delay tool. We also have the ability to set filters within our scenario. And once again, click that wrench icon, and then we can set the condition we want our scenario to check before actually running. All right, I'll close that, and then I'll show you that workaround I was referring to. And this is databases. I'm gonna to click to add a module at the end of my scenario, and I'm gonna search for database. What this does is it allows us to store the data from our scenario into an internal database on Make. We can then create another scenario where we can set a delay for when we want that next scenario to occur. So in theory, it works exactly the same as the delay function within Zapier, although it's a lot more complex and tiresome to create. While both platforms are incredibly easy to use, if you are new to the game and it's your first time entering the wild, wonderful world of integrations, then I have to suggest going with Zapier. Their support is a lot better than Make. 
They offer so many more preset connections or zaps, and not to mention their app directory is huge, huge compared to any competitor. In saying that though, if you are tech savvy, jump onto Make and have a look at setting up webhooks with those apps they don't offer. The process is easy and the help center of Make offers a lot of great articles to help you through your way. Now, while both platforms offer a free plan, there's definitely one platform that trumps the other. Zapier's 5Zap limitation is that, a huge limitation. Not to mention that once you move on to a paid plan, the lowest paid plan only offers you 15 more zaps. In comparison, Make actually gives you 1,000 operations for no cost, which is incredible. I'm still yet to find myself having to opt to upgrade to a Make paid plan. Of course, if I wanna use the entirety of Make's complex functionality, then I would, but the pricing still beats that of Zapier. So is there a winner? Well, in my mind, pretty clearly. Personally, I only ever opt for using Make unless I'm working with a user and introducing them to the wild world of integrations. In that case, then I would say check out Zapier. But when we look at the functionality of both and not to mention the pricing limitation and functionality limitation of one, then Make is definitely the winner. I also love the visual representation of your workflow in Make. It just makes sense. Zapier's step-by-step -step format, while is incredibly easy to follow at the start, it tends to get more complex when you look at different routes, different paths, as well as using your filters or functionality within the Zap. So yeah, I'm gonna have to say that Make is my choice, it's the winner, and an incredible tool that you should really check out if you're eager to save time and begin building workflow automations. Now, I hope this video has been helpful. Be sure to check out our channel for more helpful videos and tutorials, and be sure to subscribe if this video helped you. Give it a like, good luck, and have fun creating.